Welcome back to the REI Marketing Weekly. I'm your host, Josh Culler with Color Media. And today I'm excited to have, uh, so, so Greg Dickerson, but this is his second time being on the show. And Greg, you're, the, you're only the second person that's been on the show twice. John Martinez was my other one. We had him a couple weeks ago. So I'm glad to have Greg Dickerson back, a, a good friend of mine and such a huge giver. I mean, this guy just reached out to me and um, asked me like, hey, Josh, what do you need? Do, you, do we need to get on the show again to talk about something else? And I'm like, um, yeah, so let's do it. <laughs> so then he, he uh, specifically reached out and um, asked to talk about raising capital through marketing and social. So like, this is something that we've not talked about on the show, but definitely much needed, especially for those of you who are closing on deals. I know those of you who are you know, assigning contracts, then this might not apply to you, but I think you still definitely need to listen to it because at some point you need to get out of that wholesaling stage where that's all you're doing and start closing on stuff and build wealth. Because right now, obviously that wholesaling stage, that's a great money maker for you, but it's also not something that's going to be sustainable long-term in order to build some you know, financial freedom for you. So um, I think this is going to be extremely valuable for, for people to listen to. Um, again, this is something we haven't talked about, but it's much needed. Um, is raising capital through marketing or um, social media stuff. I know a lot of people, you know, when you raise capital, they typically think of it as, you know, you go to a, a meetup uh, meet event and you, you know, belly to belly network with, with some people that got money uh, or you just walk into a bank or, you know, apply for a hard money loan online, that kind of stuff. But um, I, I assume, Greg, we're going to be talking about how you can actually just attract it to you, <laughs> which is a lot better, I think instead yeah. of going to chase it. So, uh, Greg, I'm glad to have you on the show, man. Welcome back. Hey, Josh. It's good to be here, man. Thanks for having me back. You, uh, you've been doing a great job. I've been watching your stuff and, uh, you know, good, good interview. So hopefully Zoom won't crash on us here with uh, the new wave of, you know, Zooms and webinars yeah. and stuff. Yeah. So I haven't had any problems with it crashing. It's just like the startup. Like when yeah. I started it up here, it took me like 10 minutes to get it going. I don't, I'm like, ah, I don't know why. So anyway, but I'm glad to have you back. Uh, but before yeah. we get into it, guys, I want to talk to you about REI.video. Um, if you are a real estate investor, you're listening to the show, you obviously have heard myself and plenty of other guests on the show talk about uh, content marketing and video marketing and how to actually put videos out and that kind of thing. And then I have another show uh, called the Content Marketing Playbook, specifically geared towards building content out for your business. And uh, we built this platform, Color Media built a platform called REI.video, where you can shoot your own videos, whether that's with your cell phone, a point and shoot camera or whatever, and then send it over to the platform. We do all the heavy lifting for you, which is the editing process, which includes closed captions, adding music to it, um, the titles, the actual cuts and whatnot. So whether you're doing property walkthroughs, testimonial videos, uh, just videos for your website, Google My Business, all that kind of stuff. Send those on over and we get those edited for you, cut up and you give us specific directions on what you need and we get them back to you. 48 hours, unlimited revisions. You don't go to a, another platform that gives you unlimited revisions. We want to get you exactly what you want and what you're looking for. So 48 hour turnaround time, it's awesome stuff you, it, and it's built specifically for real estate investors to be able to do this. So make sure you check it out. If you go and check it out, rei.video, when you go to check out, actually type in first vid in the coupon code box and you'll get 50% off your first order there. So make sure you take advantage of that. Reach out to me if you have any questions, I'd be happy to help out. All right, cool. So let's jump into the episode today, Greg. Uh, excited to have you back on. Let's just, uh, so I, for those of the people who didn't hear the previous episode with you on, um, I definitely want you to introduce yourself one more time. And then let's just go ahead and jump into it. So uh, who is Greg Dickerson? Just give us the origin story and the background of it. And then how you're actually using marketing and social media to raise capital um, for your real estate business. Yeah. So, <clears throat> you know, I started in 1997 as a remodeling contractor, a small handyman remodeling contractor company. Built that in seven years into a $30 million company uh, doing custom homes, uh, spec house development. Uh, and along the way, started 12 other companies. and um, you know, we got into real estate development. And so I've done commercial multifamily land, industrial office, you know, pretty much every type. Uh, I haven't built a hotel yet. Um, and you know, that's the only thing I haven't done ground up, but I've torn them down and redeveloped them. Um, so uh, that's, you know, my story in a nutshell went through the whole, you know, the whole 2009 thing. I was heavy real estate at that point. Um, you know, so I've seen, uh, you know, what can happen in these types of environments, very different right now than back then. But 
interesting time. So over the years I've evolved. So when I started out, there was no social media, there was no internet really. It was, you know, very antiquated technology uh, back in the day. So I've evolved and changed with that. I'm 52 now and, you know, I'm pretty savvy when it comes to technology and social media and, and internet and you kind of have to be, right? So the word of the day is relevant, right? So, you know, if you're in the business, if you're raising capital, doing deals, whatever it is and everything we're going to talk about in terms of raising capital for social media can apply to all aspects of your business, no matter what you're doing. You've got to be relevant. In order to be relevant, you have to reach people where they are. Mm -hmm. So those people who listen to my other podcast, The Content Marketing Playbook, know that the word relevant is probably my most used word over there, <laughs> my favorite word when it comes to marketing, not just content marketing, but marketing in general. Um, yeah. I think relevance is something that people very much overlook. They just want to shotgun approach all their marketing and send it out to people, whether it's direct mail, Facebook ads, doesn't matter. Like they want to send all their marketing to every single person and waste a lot of money by doing that because it's not relevant to probably 95% of the people that you send your marketing out to. So let's yeah. talk about how you're using um, marketing and social media to actually raise private capital um, or, or capital in general. It doesn't have to be yeah. private, I guess, but um, what are some things that you're doing in order to make that happen? Like what lay the groundwork, the steps, like what, what are you putting out and then what are you doing to curate those relationships to actually get that, that, that capital through the door for you? Yeah. And so let's talk specifically about private capital, private investors, because that's what this is more geared towards. Whereas banks, hard money lenders, equity capital institutions, sure. that's different. Yeah. Um, this still helps and is, and is relevant to that. But specifically, we're talking about private investors, because for your audience, people that are borrowing hard money, private money will save you hundreds of thousands of dollars, depending on what kind of deal volume you're doing. So you don't pay any points. You can borrow money right now from six to eight percent um, from private investors that you know have money in IRAs and things like that. So uh, this is a great strategy. And you know when you talk about raising capital, when you talk about you know doing deals, you hear the whole no like and trust, right? So number one, people need to know you. They got to know of you. They got to know who you are. But on the deeper level of no, you're using social media by creating content like you help people do with videos. Um, you can write articles, blogs, whatever. Number one, you got to be an expert. You got to know what you're doing. So what you're doing is you're sharing your expertise and what you do through social media. So you're not out there, <clears throat> you know, raising capital or, or, you know, soliciting because you can't solicit investors. Okay. There are mm -hmm. SEC guidelines. Right. You have to be very careful. You can't go out and say, Hey, you know, I'll you know, lend me money and I'll give you a return. So mm -hmm. that's what you're, not what you're doing. You're not soliciting for investors. You're sharing what you do. You're sharing your expertise, your skill set, your business model, whatever that is. And, and how you do what you do. And in that, you can talk about, I have private investors that fund these deals for me uh, and they, they get better than uh, average returns. So there's ways that you can word that where you're not soliciting, you're sharing what you do. So people need to know you. They need to know of you. They need to know who you are, what you're made of, what your uh, expertise is. So you're sharing and exposing all that. Then they need to like you. So right now it's very difficult. You can't go face to face, belly to belly, which is one of the best ways you know, to get to know people. So now more than ever, it's important to be out there in front of people sharing your skill set and sharing your personality. Not everybody's going to like you. You're not going to like everybody, but you're going to attract the ones that you have a personality match with. So you're sharing your expertise, your skill set, your business model. People get to know who you are, what you're about, and whether or not they like you. And then they got to trust you. And the trust factor is built a number of ways. It's built by showcasing your projects, what you're doing. You know, here's what we bought it for. Here's what we uh, spent on it. Here's what we made at the end of the day. By the way, our investors made X, um, mm -hmm. so you can share that information. I had an investor on this deal who made 10 grand, and he didn't have to do anything, totally passive. So you can share those things, and you're not soliciting. So uh, that's how people get to trust you, as they see real-life investors. So you, know, you can take an investor, a private investor, to the project with you, shoot a video. Josh, you do stuff on site, I think, with people, and make almost like your own uh, Flip This House show or Flip or Flop where you're out, you're, you're on the deal with your private investor and they talk about how they got to know you and how they invest with you and what they do. So those are the types of things in this day and age that are just huge. They're powerful having real people that you're dealing with, um, you know, through the process. If you're a house flipper, start the process from the beginning, get it okay with your seller. Hey, can I record this negotiation that we're doing in the sale process and the walk through the house? And uh, then your private investor, bring him out, show him the deal you know, those types of things. And, um, you know, video record that whole thing. So you got your own little show. That's a huge evergreen marketing piece that's out there over and over and over that you can share with your audience, you can promote. So you can make little bits of content 
you know, around that video that you shoot. So do one video shoot of the whole process. It can be chopped up into little bits and pieces of content that can be shared. You find out what's resonating with people, different taglines, different keywords, different types of clips. Then you promote the ones that people like the best. So that's how people get to know you, get to know your business model. Then you start receiving messages from people that, hey, I love what you're doing. You know, you're obviously an expert. I want to invest with you. Do you have any opportunities? And literally, that's how it works. I don't ask anybody for money. Never really have. Back in the day before the internet, it was local. You know, people knew me. They knew what I did. I was out in the community. I was very social. I was on the boards of pretty much everything. Uh, when my kids were growing up, sports, church, community foundations, things like that. You know, I had a big company. And, uh, you know, so I was a, you know, philanthropic and a supporter of the community. Um, both in the face-based and non-face-based uh, community. And um, so people knew what I did because you're just talking. So when you're talking to people, you're sharing, you know, what you do on the offline uh, and you want to have that elevator, which we can talk about that next, you know, the elevator pitch. You want to have that one liner ready to go whenever somebody asks you what you do. So it started that way. Now it's all moved online. And especially right now, you really want to cultivate that online stuff. Yeah. So the reason I like, I, I don't like this. I love this so much is because of the fact that people don't, people really don't realize that you can actually use social platforms, not, not just social, pla any, any content, any platform that you could put content on, whether that's your right. website, YouTube, Google, my business, Facebook, Inst anything you can use these platforms as re I, I, I know entrepreneurs don't like this word resumes, right? Yeah. Um, I don't have a resume. So like, but, the, but, the, but the bottom line is, is that most people find me and my services by the content that I put out, just talking about content. And I don't hardly do any advertising period. And, and this, yeah. this translate, you know, I'm talking about my services. Obviously I'm not a private money. I am a private money lender, but I, I'm not looking to raise private money right now. Um, but like this translate the same way over to what, what Greg's talking about here. So what you guys don't realize is that the more content you put out and show people what you can and can't do, what problems you're able to solve, what you can take care of, um, you can almost use this as a portfolio or a resume for yourself. Greg, I know that you've been on, uh, Michael Zuber's podcast quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And this is what he always tells uh, me and his audience is that like, I'm using this YouTube channel to be able to leverage like any relationships I want in the future. So that if, you know, if, if I get in a bad spot and an investor comes around and I need to raise some, you know, maybe, maybe the private money capital is all, it's all dried up, but I I'm looking for somebody and they come to me and say, Hey, what experience do you have? I can point them to, you know, 50,000 videos on YouTube. Right. So like, that's, yeah. that, that's the, that's what the power in putting, content out on not just social platforms, but any platform that you can put content out on, that's the power that it can bring. And, yeah. um, you know, not to mention all the other, you know, all the other arbitrary, arbitrary, like, you know, relationships that can bring, you know, if you're, if you're looking to acquire deals, like wholesalers can find you on social platforms and bring you deals because they don't know who right. else to sell it to. So, I mean, there's a lot of different reasons why this works extremely well. Obviously it works for Greg. Um, and I think that people need to, uh, take this very seriously, especially raising capital, raising private money, but how to raise it, especially now that, you know, in the, in the time that we can't really go anywhere right now, we're in the, we're on, you know, recording this episode, April one, and the president just extended the, you know, the, the stay at home order for another a couple or few weeks, however long yeah. it's going to last. Who, who knows how long it's going to last. So you're not going to be able to go to meetups and rub belly belly with people and, and that kind of thing. So um, before you jump into that next segment, I, I, I'd like to hear like, obviously I want people to go follow you and I'll link all that in the description below and give you the opportunity to talk about that at the end of the show here. But what kind of content are you putting out in order to bring this to light? I know you mentioned several ones, but what, what specifically are people like responding to? um, like what type of videos that you're, that you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, before you put content out, let's just back up. I skipped a part. You got to be dialed in, you got to be packaged and you got to have your presence out there before you start sharing and putting content. So you got to have your website, all your social profiles, you know, all those things dialed in consistent, looking professional. So that's number yeah. one. So yeah. with that being said, video obviously is number one right now. So, so video is number one. It's going to continue to be number one. It's the new TV. It's in your phone everywhere you go. So, you know, video is where it's at. Now, as far as the platforms, you got to be on all of them. So I know some people say, hey, pick one and own that. That doesn't work anymore. You have to be everywhere because everybody's different. Some people are LinkedIn, some are Facebook, some are YouTube, some are Instagram. 
you know, those are the big four. There's other things coming and going, TikTok, all that kind of stuff, you know, but uh, those are the big four and you've got to be on all of them, but you got to be on all of them organically. So um, like you don't want to use these mass posting things and just throw it out onto each one. You want to post those videos native on each one or have somebody doing it for you so that it goes out organically. That increases your viewing and your viewership. Uh, so that's number one. The other things some people like to read. So, you know, writing articles and submitting those to blog sites, having these on your website, keyword, keyword you know, oriented, um, you know, people like to read those. So you can post articles, you can have, uh, you, can you can publish a book. It's getting easier and easier to self-publish. So that builds credibility, mm -hmm. authority, and you can present your business opportunity in the book without soliciting, without doing, you're just talk talking about what you're doing. But video by far is number one podcast. Now, podcasts are right behind video. So let's not yeah. forget audio. Yep. So every video that you create, the audio can be stripped and uploaded as a podcast. So you don't have to always come up with unique content for podca podcasts. You can use all your video, the audio from all your videos that you're making, and you can have those videos transcribed. You can take what you're writing and you can read that, you know, and use that as a podcast. So, you know, those are the two big ones, podcasts and, and video. And then, you know, your written content comes behind that. Mm -hmm. Cool. And this is all up my alley too. I, I literally yeah, just did it. Yeah. I literally just did an episode yesterday for the content marketing playbook that was um, talking about the power of transcriptions and closed captions and you just gave and the I example. I didn't see like, that by the way. This yeah, just, it is what it is. You know? It's just it's the, the example that you gave. So yeah. again, going back to Michael Zuber, like that's what we do for him is mm -hmm. we take, you know, his videos that he puts out on YouTube. We, we strip the audio, throw that into a podcast and his podcast got 100,000 downloads within the first four or five months, I believe. I don't remember the exact number, which yeah. was pretty awesome. And then we take those podcasts and select some of the top ones and transcribe those and throw those into a blog on his website. So they're, yeah. I mean, just multi-purpose, but I agree with Greg, like you, you definitely want to be, you definitely want to know your audience and know where your private, you know, your private money hangs out. And that's where you want to go to and go extremely hard. So if you are getting a ton of traction on, I would, I would assume LinkedIn and Facebook are going to be the primary spots for private money lenders. Um, YouTube and podcasting would follow up right behind that. Uh, but like as for video content specifically, like putting that out there, I think that's the, definitely the places you need to go and go hard at them. Like, like just yep. put out a ton of content. Um, but you're a product. So everything you're doing, yeah. whether it's your business, Josh, or whether, you know, your audience, if you're a wholesaler, house flipper, or private lender, whatever you are, you are a product. So in terms of a product, you got to have the right offer, the right thing packaged the right way to the right audience, okay, um, in a way that's relevant to them in, in their platforms yes. that they're looking for that information uh, in a way that you can scale it, auto, you know, auto, automate it, right? So like you're talking about, you know, and to be able to repurpose all that content. But number one, it's the right thing. What is it that you're offering? You are a product. Whatever it is you're doing, if you're raising capital, that's a product. You're offering an opportunity for people to invest and earn money. That's a product. So you got to have the right audience, you know, for that. And you got to message them in your, the right way. So you got to have the right messaging, the right positioning uh, for them. And then it's got to be scalable. So relevant and scalable. So those are basically the four things that you need to think about. You're a media company. Everybody's a media company now. Everybody is a product now, no matter what you're doing. Um, so that's it. The right audience, the right offer to the right audience, you know, packaged with the right messaging that's relevant, okay, at the right timing, you know, for people and just keep it out there at scale. So one more thing I want to add to this, and then we'll dive into that last part that you wanted to go into for, for this whole thing. Um, you guys understand, I, I know I mentioned before that, you know, you could use social media platforms or any content platform as kind of your resume, your portfolio, mm -hmm. whatever you want to call it. But at the same time, like you got to understand, you know, social media and content. A lot, a lot of people say that social media changes people and guys, it doesn't, it, it only amplifies the person that they already are. So if somebody is flashy on social media, that means they were flashy before social media existed. So you got to keep that in mind. That's, that's just how things are. And I know a lot of people argue with me on that, but it's truth. Like I know I have friends of mine. I know people and I knew them before social media came out and the exact person that they were, if they were an a-hole before social media came out, they're an a-hole on social media. That's exactly right. So it just amplifies the person that they are. And that's the same thing for your business. If you don't have your business put together and you don't have things dialed in and you try to create content around that, then it's not going to come off well. Right? So make sure, first of all, you got that set in place. But the thing I wanted to hit on was like, when, when you put content on, on social media, yes, this is going to be your resume. 
what a lot of people will do if they're going to do business with you. And I do this for my clients. You know, if I'm going to take a client on and I'm going to actually spend time because we're a white glove service, what we, what color media does, um, you know, for guys like Mike Zuber, Don Costa, Mike Cambright, John Martinez, and these other people that we do business with on a consistent basis, on a monthly basis, I go stalk them on social media before I jump on a call with them, period. So like even with Greg, like if I get somebody on the podcast, this is my brand. I want to make sure that if somebody's going to be on my podcast, they've got a good reputation and they have like already content put out there to show the value that they give. And so I go stalk those people. And it's the same thing if you're going to like have private money lenders, like they're giving you their nest egg, their money to entrust you. It's the whole thing, no like and trust that Greg just said. And you can build that no like trust process with content marketing inside of your social accounts so that if a private money lender is interested in doing business with you, they can go scrape all the content that you've put out on Facebook and literally vet you so that when they get on the phone call with you, it's going to be a lot easier of a conversation than like, Hey, I know nothing about you. <laughs> I know nothing about you. So tell me everything, right? No, they already know a good amount from the content you put out. So um, I just wanted to add that. I think that's a really good um, point that Greg, Greg's bringing up here. So Greg, let's yeah. talk about brand um, credibility, which brings and creates brand equity. Yes. So yep. those are two separate, that's a whole separate recording, but brand credibility, which creates brand equity. So everybody's trying to rank their website, mm -hmm. rank yourself. Yeah. This is the cheapest, easiest way to rank yourself. And you come up first in the search engine. You don't even Absolutely. have to worry about keywords. So we'll, we'll, that's another conversation. Absolutely. We'll get you on for round three to talk about that. <laughs> All right, cool. So Greg, I know you wanted to talk about one more thing with this whole um, and, and bringing this full circle, bringing it together. So go ahead and go deeper into that. It, it, regarding? I think you were talking about the, the foundation of it, or um, you were going to talk a little bit further into the, the, the cap, the, like the next step after you know, you have attracted somebody to your platforms, maybe the curation part of it. Oh, and, yeah, 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 yeah. So, okay. So the whole idea is to attract people. So they're coming to you. You're not reaching out to them. And then what? Yeah, that's right. So we're talking about the one liner. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, so you got to have your elevator. You've heard it, elevator pitch, yes. one liner, you know, whatever. So when somebody asks what you do and you're raising capital uh, and that's what you want to convey, you got to have that one line sentence ready to go. So if you're a house flipper, you know, hey, I flip houses just like you see on HGTV, you know, flip or flop, you know, those types of shows. I have investors that I work with and we provide uh, above average returns that are secured and insured by the real estate. And then you shut up and you let them start asking you questions. But mm -hmm. I flip houses just like you see on HGTV, something like that. So if you're in the multifamily commercial space, whatever, you can say, hey, I raised capital to buy multifamily properties throughout the Southeast, typically two to 400 units, 20 to $50 million. And I have investors that go in with me on these deals. They earn above average returns. It's a very exciting space. And then you just shut down and you let them, let them say. So, you know, you want to prepare something like that that's a one-liner that's very quick, that you're planting a seed. Uh, and then they start asking you questions. And, you know, you're not pitching, you're not selling, you're just sharing. You're just telling them what you do. Hey, I raise capital for this, you know, and I provide above average returns. If it's, if it's a note, indeed, a trust situation from a private lender, that is secured and insured. If it's a multifamily deal and you're syndicating, um, you know, it's not secured and insured. It's insured, but it's not secured. That investment's not secured or insured, but the property is. Uh, so you're buying, you know, large institutional quality, um, commercial, multifamily, whatever it is, you know, where you um, bring people together to do bigger deals than you can do alone. Uh, you know, again, above average return. So real simple, real concise. You plant that seed, then they ask you more about it. Um, but the number one thing you want to do is, you know, everybody's going to ask you what you do, right? So you're going to share that line. And then, you know, you have to have multiple meetings with people. You can't take money on the first event. You don't want to try to close. You don't want to try to sell. You want to follow up mm -hmm. and have meetings set up to follow up. So you share what you do. Then once they start asking you questions, say, look, we can get together and talk about that again because you're probably at a social gathering or whatever. Let's talk about you. What do you do? You know, tell me about your family. Where did you come from? How did you do that? Tell me more about your business. So you get them talking about themselves, right? And then you schedule a follow-up to discuss what it is you do. And again, at that follow-up, you're not bringing any materials, you're not pitching, you're not trying to close. Now you're going into detail about your business because that's what they want to know. Well, how do you do it? Well, you know, I go out and I find, you know, properties that are undervalued. Typically, it's a distressed seller, just like you see on the TV shows. Those are either foreclosures or somebody, you know, just needs to sell a property, you know, for whatever reason. And we'll go in and we'll buy them, we'll renovate them and sell them, or sometimes we'll keep them and rent them you know, or, or, you know, sometimes I'll assign the contract to another 
uh, investor that's doing a number of things. So, and then you get into detail. Yeah, this is how we find our properties. This is how we value the property. This is, this is how we spend the money to repair them. This is what we do. This is what it costs. This is the team. So, you know, that second meeting is just the detail. You never ask for anything at that point. Uh, they're going to be asking you, you're going to be asking these questions. They've already seen you on social media. They already know, you know what you're doing. Now they want to know, Hey man, how does this work? And you know, so the last thing at that meeting, you know, either they're interested or not. Hey, if you know anybody who'd be interested in, in participating in these deals, let me know. And then you go away and generally you're going to get a response. Well, you know, I'm interested. The other thing you want to uh, be prepared for and understand, there's a lot of money sitting in IRAs, money markets, CDs, yep. things like that, yep. that people can use. It's just sitting there, um, earning very little money right now. So if you're giving somebody six to 8%, that's huge. That's mm -hmm. double the return that they're probably making anywhere else. So you want to have an uh, self-directed IRA custodian ready so that you can be a concierge solution to somebody. If they say, yeah, you know, I've got money in IRA, but I have no idea how to switch it over or a 401k or whatever. Make sure you've got an expert in your market to deal and help these people convert that um, so that then they can start investing with you. So um, you want to have all these, that's what part of packaging yourself as an expert and all that. And that's more content that you can share how people can convert their 401k IRAs into a passive investment right. in real estate uh, and earn double the returns they're probably earning anywhere else. Um, you got to be careful about that. Yeah. And I'm not saying that's what you do. I'm just saying, you know, that's an avenue that you have. So, so that's what you want to be prepared for. Um, now, not at any time did I say have a package that you slam in front of somebody or that you're asking them or closing them. You're just explaining what you do, how it works. And then you ask them, Hey, do you know anybody that might be interested? Um, you know, that's easy, easier for people to do. Um, and that way they'll say, well, you know, I'm interested, you know, and Hey, that's great. But anybody else, you know, feel free to share them. So they have your info. So those are the types of things that you want to be ready for in those conversations. So you can have at least three uh, substantive contacts with the investor before you bring them in. And if it's a one-off deal, you know, again, you got to talk to your attorneys about all this, make sure all the paperwork's dialed mm -hmm. in. If it's a one-off deal, it's a note, deed of trust, mortgage, just like a bank. Um, if it's a multifamily deal and you're syndicating, you need an SEC attorney to make sure that you're within the guidelines and they'll structure different offerings. And there's different offerings um, that you can do where you can do general solicitation, but you don't want to do that, you know, if you, if you haven't done that. You know, you just want to build that credibility, build that authority, and be ready to answer questions, be ready to talk about your business. And at no time are you asking them to invest. You're just telling them what you do. They're going to ask you on their own. Right, absolutely. So I'm glad you brought that full circle, and thank you for doing that. So, something I always tell people, and, um, you know, sales trainers like John Martinez say this all the time too, some of the best marketing that you can do is um, care, caring. Like, mm -hmm. that's like... So you mentioned one of the things that you, you said was like, before you tell them about, after you give your elevator pitch, let them ask questions, ask them about their business and ask them about who they are and what their goals are for, you know, if, if they're interested in, in lending money out to you, ask them, Hey, why do you want to lend money? What do you, what is your end goal? What are you trying to get to? Um, ask those questions because when you do, uh, the, the reason why this art form is so effective is because hardly anybody does it. <laughs> All they want to do is talk about themselves. So when you talk about other people, you know, if I'm, if I get a client on the phone with me to, and, and, and they want to learn more about my services, the first thing I ask them is, well, why don't you tell me about yourself and what your goals are? Because I might be able to curate my services around what your needs are. Right. Um, and, and it's a whole adage of, you know, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And that, that statement right there is literally one of the best marketing, marketing pieces of advice that you can ever take. So take that into consideration, make sure you do that. So I, I'm, uh, thank you for bringing that full circle, but Greg, we're going to have to wrap this up, man. I appreciate you sharing everything that you have. We'll have you back for round three. So we can talk about brand equity and that kind of thing. Um, yep. but thank you for taking the time to be on here and be, be on here for a second time at that. Uh, I want to give you the opportunity if somebody does want to connect with you and follow the content that you are putting out, what's the best way to make that happen. And guys, obviously we are going to be have, having all of that linked in the description below. So make sure you check that out. So Greg, how can people get in contact with you? Yeah, gregdickerson.com. So all of my info's on there, YouTube, podcast. Uh, you know, I'm making content every day, sharing, you know, what I've learned over the past, you know, 25 years, you know, doing deals, raising capital and how to survive in an environment like this. So, um, you know, it's up there, gregdickerson.com. Take a look at it and feel free to reach out. Absolutely. So we'll have that linked in the description below, guys. Make sure you click on that and check it out and go follow him on all of his platforms. So Greg, thank you so much for being on the show today, man. Look forward to having you back again soon. Yeah, it's great to be here, Josh. 
All right, guys, that's going to do it for today's episode. Uh, again, make sure you do go check out rei.video. Just type in the web browser rei.video. Uh, make sure you, if you're going to place an order for a video to be edited or produced in the checkout section of the, uh, where, when you check out in the section where it says coupon, type in first vid and you'll get 50% off your first order. And make sure that you let me know if you have any questions or any concerns or you just want to learn more about it. Be happy to connect or if you want to get in contact with anybody that's been on the show, have anybody specific on the show for me to interview, loop me in an email with them and I'd be happy to uh, make that happen. So josh at colormedia.com is my email address. Reach out to me if you have any questions. That's going to do it for today's episode. Thank you so much for joining me today and I'll catch you guys on the next one. See you later.